Hello. <laughs> I feel like I haven't made videos hardly for the past week because I've been so crazy busy. Uh, how are you doing? Hey, I heard from a few people that the hairball said that Fujifilm is not a professional camera. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's talk about that one in a second. Yeah, isn't that an interesting statement? By the guy that sniffs cameras and takes pictures of brick walls. Um, that was a little bit of humor, but uh, partially serious. Specifically, what about an interesting juxtaposition? I just want to mention something here very briefly. You know, the top 10 YouTube photography channels, wherever I place in there, you could even take the top 20. It's interesting that they all have affiliate links except for me. I've got more experiences with lenses than all of them combined. Yeah, but we're not talking about lenses. We're talking about cameras right now. Um, fixed cameras. Certainly had a lot of them apart. I find the interiors of cameras especially important. Um, none of them live that super seriously long, especially if you're going to use them really hardcore. And this is what insurance is for. But I find it extremely interesting that all those people with affiliate links are the same people that tell you that Sony cameras are the best in the world. Yeah, yeah, and let's just take that juxtaposed to what I've been saying and that I have no affiliate links and I can't recommend Sony cameras and I don't like them for many valid, existential, empirical, objective reasons. Yeah, menu system, poor ergonomics, poorly built, poor weather sealing, poor reliability, on and on and on and on. And of course, Sony's not a camera company, they're a consumer electronics company. Well, Sony sells a lot of cameras, you need to shut the hell up, you fat, bald, tattooed monkey. You know, it's called a bandwagon fallacy. That's like ex-religion has more believers than anyone else, therefore you should join that because, you know, nothing says accuracy and truth more than you know, a large group of lemmings or sheep that believe in something. So I'm not stupid enough, not stupid at all, in fact, to fall for a bandwagon fallacy. No, I'm not. Don't you find that juxtaposition slightly odd? The people that have all the affiliate links, which is all of them, are the same people recommending Sony cameras. I have no affiliate links, and I can't recommend a Sony camera. Shouldn't you think about that for just a second? Maybe you don't want to. Maybe you could just tell me how much you hate me. Well, I got a Sony camera and it's great. Compared to what? Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, I heard tonight via live stream that uh, Fujifilm doesn't make professional cameras <laughs> from, from the hairball. Well, my response to that would be, A, this is a two-parter, A and B. A, where the hell is Sony's medium format camera lenses? It's never gonna happen. And B, Maybe you should send a message to that guy that I've done interviews with this week, name of uh, Mr. Benjamin Kinnerick. Yeah, Mr. Guy that takes pictures of brick walls. You know, the guy that shoots for uh, Vogue and Elle and Harper's and on and on and on. You know, all the really, really prestigious photographic uh, haute couture. You know, the best of the best of the best. Chanel, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, it is the best. Yeah, why don't you tell him and his uh, Fujifilm X-T3s that he uses and his uh, Fujifilm GFX medium format. Why don't you tell him how unprofessional you think Fujifilm cameras <laughs> No. Stick to taking pictures of brick walls. Don't tell other people what you think that is uh, empirically not only unsubstantiated, but untrue and obtusely illogical. Yeah. Yeah. Let me repeat after you. 102 megapixels of medium format with IBIS. Yeah. Unprofessional, right. Yeah. Some of the finest fashion product corporate event photographers in the world using Fujifilm. Um, I know I sound like a Fuji shill and this sounds like a commercial, but let me be brutally honest with you. No matter what you buy, I don't make a dime. I've said that a thousand times before if this is the first time you've uh, seen me make a video. And I, I actually love Nikon to death. I've got seven Nikon bodies, hundreds and hundreds of Nikkor lenses. Yeah, I love Nikon, but they've come out with nothing the past two years, essentially, that I would even dare think of buying. It's not. Single card slot is not good. 
It's like, what about the X-T30? It's only got a single card slot. You're right. And as for like a travel, you know, walk around, whatnot camera, it's, it's not for any sort of gig, wedding. You know, same thing with the so-called professional. And even Nikon, actually Dirk Diggler is his name. He was head of Nikon Europe. He even he said that the uh, Z6 and Z7 are not professional level Z series. Now it's extremely likely that Fuji at the Nikon, as they very well said, is going to come out with um, a professional level Z series camera. However, those are still in their infancy. Um, let's talk about here at the end of 2019 where Fujifilm sits relative to these other people. Really, Nikon. I've said this before, and I really mean it. I, I keep thinking about this all the time. I've, I've thought about this for well over two years. They're really taking the path of IBM. They see Nikon from their ivory towers looking down at all the hardcore sports action, wildlife, and photojournalists using Nikon cameras, and they are, and Canon too. And they're propping their feet up on the table, smoking their big fat cigars. Same thing that IBM did. And little did they know down on the first floor as they were being undermined at the uh, grassroots level. Look what Fujifilm has done to Nikon in the uh, past uh, three years plus. Look where they've actually positioned themselves as far as what uh, anchors that they've dropped. Um, now Nikon I know is going to come up with a D6 and it could be the best thing since sliced bread but we don't know yet. Over the past two years Nikon has really dropped some poopers and the new Z50 is designed to compete with the X-T30 and the Sony A6000 series of cameras and it's priced competitively until you realize that if you have Nikon lenses you're going to have to buy that damn adapter which it does not come with. Yeah, which is going to jack the price up substantially well above that of the X-T30 and uh, the, A, uh, the uh, Sony uh, 6000 series cameras. There's no joystick on the damn camera, which I rode Fujifilm for on the X-T20. And they put it on the X-T30. Yeah, so, so, uh, so Fujifilm listens. Nikon does not really... Nikon is an extremely hubristic corporation. They really have their head firmly uh, planted up their backsides. I hate to say it, and I love Nikon to death. I really do. But let's just look at the anchors that Fujifilm has currently. Looking at the year ending of 2019, they're about to drop the X-Pro3. It's going to come out this year. Fact, yeah? Um, I've seen the huge viewfinder on the new X-Pro3. That's fascinating. Unless someone's a hardcore like a fanboy just because they like expensive stuff and like and like it, it does have some really nice lenses. I mean, the camera company's struggling. They're trying to go digital as fast as they can. The company's been up for sale twice recently. Um, Zeiss wants to buy them, but they didn't want to sell a majority share to Zeiss. As I said, the hell with that. So that merger didn't go through. Zeiss will very logically love to buy Leica. It's a very sensible purchase, but they weren't going to buy it without a majority share. But the, the anchors of our Fujifilm currently has, here in 2019, I'm getting to the point, Fujifilm absolutely owns everybody else's ass on medium format. Literally within a two-year period of time, essentially, a little bit more than two years, Fujifilm owns everybody on medium format. Here we have the uh, world's first crossover medium format camera with IBIS. At $10,000, this camera is actually extremely inexpensive. Compared to what? What are you, you going to compare it to? You're going to compare it to a $45,000 Phase 1? What exactly do you plan on comparing it to? Are you going to compare it to another IBIS medium format, which doesn't exist? What exactly are you going to compare it to? It's made in Japan, magnesium body. It's 102 megapixels of BSI with IBIS. Shutterstock is, I personally, and I've said this a thousand times, a thousand videos, I don't give a damn about IBIS for photography. It's extremely useful for videography. Um, no photographer really needs IBIS, but one thing where it is useful is a medium format where shutter shock is a serious issue because the shutter mech first and second curtain are uh, so heavy and uh, impart so much inertia. Uh, IBIS actually is extremely useful on medium format. So Fujifilm owns the world on medium format. They literally do. That's not my opinion. They do. Here in professional crop sensor level cameras like the uh, X-T3 uh, and the X-T2 series, X-T1, I mean, my God, I can't think of how many thousands of people have emailed me and messaged me how happy they are with their X-T3. I love the hell out of mine. I mentioned Benjamin Canaric. He's uh, doing Vogue, L, Harper's, you know, Haute Couture, Creme de la Creme. Uh, world-class level photography with his X-T3 and there is nothing lacking. These are in his own words on the X-T3 system. He's also using, of course, a pair of, uh, now using a pair of GFX 
medium format cameras uh, for some of that work and is incredibly happy with it. And uh, as so far as, I don't want to say, uh, it's not nostalgic, but as so far as a purist sort of a photography platform like the X100F, um, the next iteration of that and the uh, prior iteration of uh, uh, the X100 series, which I also happen to have, leaf shutter, street sweeper camera, and uh, now the X-Pro3 that people have been waiting years for. I mean, the huge viewfinder and that thing looks really impressive. I can't wait to get it in my hands. I can only assume on the specifications, but probably something uh, similar to the current X-T3 uh, and also to... Uh, the speed and uh, the buffer rate, and probably some surprises in the XT, uh, excuse me, in the X Pro 3, but I don't know what those specifications are. I mean, so we have the X Pro 3 and the X100F universe of Fujifilm. Fujifilm owns everybody on medium format. With the XT30, the, uh, the lesser child of the XT3, if you will, combined with the XT30, I mean, Fujifilm's setting it on fire. Uh, those anchors for Fujifilm are uh, substantial relative to Canon. Where the hell is Canon's medium format? I mean, uh, not medium format, but uh, mirrorless systems. No one's really bought into them. They, like the M5 was a cool, awesome little camera. I, I enjoyed uh, using and playing with it, but, you know, the lenses are no damn good. Even the Canon rep himself, standing right there talking to him, an old guy with a mustache, I won't give you his name, he's like, you're right, the lenses are no damn good for the M5. It's an awesome camera, no damn good lenses for it. I mean, the truth hurts. And where is Nikon? Sitting up in their ivory tower, still appreciating, you know, all the hardcore pros. And that's factual, you know. Uh, wildlife photojournalists, yada yada, using uh, DSLRs. And uh, I love the D850. The D850 is the last great thing Nikon made. People say I've been attacking Nikon lately, and that's not true at all. I mean, Nikon drops something worth buying. I'll gladly buy it, but the uh, past uh, three uh, poopers... The Z-series lenses suck. I got attacked a lot by some Nikon fanboys. What do you mean they suck? It's like, oh, well, you know, compared to what? I mean, they suck. They're just, they're not worth owning. They're just not. I'm sorry, but they're not. And the Z-series cameras can't autofocus screw drive lenses. Some of the best like, ni uh, lenses Nikon makes are screw drive lenses. Um, poor autofocus, well, of which they fixed part of that. Poor user interface has not been fixed. The build quality and the ergos are great, but I mean, Nikon has nothing currently that's worth buying. The next Z series camera is sure to be some sort of pro Z series with a dual card slot. Let's see how great it is. Let's see how great the Nikon D6 is. If it's the hybrid system, I mean, my God, that'll be really, really impressive. But I doubt it will be. Nikon is literally taking the path of IBM. You know, they, they have no idea what's coming down the pike for them. They're starting to realize, but I think it's a little too little too late. Um, yeah, it's funny how, yeah, I, I don't watch the guy's videos, but several people, did you, did you see the guy's video, the hairball said that Fujifilm's not a professional camera. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's pretty funny. Tell me how that works. Anyway, I'm sorry I've been gone for the past week. I've been incredibly busy. I hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, I hope to see a bunch of you, or some of you, I've been contacted by a bunch of people, up at uh, Photo Plus in uh, New York City. Um, never been to New York City except to pass through it on my way to Russia. That doesn't count. Um, I'm still not really going to be able to see New York City. I don't have the wherewithal to travel around and do whatever. I need to stay within the Photo Plus Center for most of it, which is fine with me. I, uh, I love to travel. I don't get to afford to travel that much. It's just too damn expensive. But uh, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing many peoples up there. Anyway, have a wonderful week. Thank you. And goodbye.